Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord with you. Um, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to, um, uh, my daughter, Leanna, is not feeling well, so she's, she's at home. Um, so unless somebody wants to come up here and sing a cappella, anybody? Come on up, Brother Abraham. No? You can join us. Amen. Um, but, uh, but nobody brave enough going once, going twice. All right. Okay. H how many here sing at home? All the time. <laughs> All the time, right? Amen. How many here sing to your, how many sing to your wives? <laughs> what? <laughs> Brother Ricardo. There's never a dull moment with you. Amen. Praise God. Um, I'd like to take this time to um, take some prayer requests. There's a need in your, in your life. <laughs> you can say, I, I mean, you don't want to talk about it, just unspoken. Um, I, I do want to pray for um, Vanessa, Vanessa, Vanessa Vasquez. Did I say that right? Vasquez? Is that, is that her last name? Rodriguez. I think it's Vasquez, yes. Um, and she, she came here about three weeks ago and got the Holy Ghost. Um, and um, she's in need. Uh, she's a single mom. Um, we, have, we have one single mom here. And, and you know, it, it's, it's tough being a single mom, um, you know, trying to make it with, with a, a bunch of kids. So the struggle is real, you know. And I admired single moms coming in and grabbing their children and bringing them to the house of the Lord so that, so that they have some kind of foundation. You know, they, they, they instill, you know, the goodness of God in them. Um, the problem in that we have in society today is that, is that the parent, I mean, the, there's not enough um, dads to stay in the marriage. They leave, they leave the, the wife, you know, and, and, the, and, and the wives get stuck with their children. You know, and thank God for the step in dads that step in, you know, to take over. You know, I, I was one, I, I am one of them. I'm one of them, you know, and um, my wife left me, left me with two kids and my wife had three kids. And so uh, we stepped in each other's lives. <laughs> she was a stepmom. I was a stepdad. And then um, then we had two beautiful children, Crystal and um uh, and um, Leanna, so, uh, but it is tough. It is tough when they come in here and they bring their children. That's really good. I, I admire them. I pray for them, you know. So, um, um, but let's pray for Vanessa so that uh, the Lord will help her and her finances. Uh, she's really in, in in need of the finances right now. Uh, she's about to lose uh, some uh, commodities in her in her home. And um, nowhere to get around, so we want to make sure that that the Lord um, um, intervenes in her, in her situation. She just called me today. So, um, anybody else? Anybody else have a yes? A month old and ho oh, no, up in heart surgery, huh? Wow, man. Also. Well, we're talking about surgery. Um, Alfredo Jr., um, they, uh, uh, he got taken back to the hospital. He, he's, they induced, he's got an induced coma because they, uh, they found uh, an infection in his brain. And so uh, it got swelled up, and they, they, took, they took a syringe and took everything out of there for the most part. But uh, they're going to try to do another MRI with him. And so, um, but let's pray for him. The family is really, yes, is, is it about Alfredo? Yes, go ahead. Awesome. Yeah. I was talking, I was talking to his dad and, and, you know, it's like, it's like 
the discouragement, you know, of seeing him better, and all of a sudden you get a sucker punch, you know, from nowhere, you know, and it's like that's really tough, you know, when you have a loved one that you love so much and and something like that that reset, you know, it's like you're you're feeling those feelings again, those those ugly butterflies, you know, like you you're afraid that something's going to happen, and so uh, uh, if you've never been there, then you you never know. But I, I we definitely need to pray for him as well. Uh, anybody else? Yes, Sister Marta. Um, I think the marriage experience also illustrates that you have a great sense of stability and peace in your Amen. Uh, you want the Lord to open the door for the county job? Oh, okay. You, for your license. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yes, Sister Lisa. Amen. Working from home is not everybody's cup of tea. It's not, you know. It, it, it's it's the actual fact of getting out from the home it, that releases a lot of stress. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I don't think I could ever work from home. I, that's just not in me, uh, you know. Um, but we'll pray for them. Amen. Uh, you know, your your family has come a long ways. I just want to tell you that. Okay, um, uh, that. There's there's a lot of um, a lot of hope there, you know, and and uh, we in the beginning when you started bringing the names up, they, they would they would come once in a while, okay. And now they're like missing like maybe every other week or maybe two weeks, but 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 they're coming now, you know. So that's a good thing. So um, definitely, anybody else? Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen, amen. Anybody else? Yes, it's Irene. Sunday school kids. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, that whole family, huh? Yeah, they they they're going through the valley there. Anybody else? Okay, let's let's take these prayer requests unto the Lord. Okay, uh, as a matter of fact, um, let's do this. All right, uh, where you're at, can you can you just kneel down right there on uh, on the floor right now, and and let's let's take about a couple of minutes, Amen. In place of the music, you know, let's 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 just pray for all these prayer requests right now. Will you do that for me? Okay. Amen. Let's take time. The Bible says the best the best fights you can ever uh, the best warfare you can ever do is on your knees. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I thank you, mighty God, for your goodness and your mercy that endureth forever. Lord, I love you and I glorify you, Lord, right now. Lord, I pray for Vanessa, Lord. You know the need in her finances right now, God. Lord, uh, everything's coming against her, God. But Lord, uh, hallelujah, when the enemy comes against us, mighty God, that you will lift up a standard, Lord, and that you will be there for, for us, mighty God. I, Lord, I ask you, God, to make a way for her in her finances, Lord, right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, you're the only one that can do this, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Open the doors for her in the name of Jesus, God, right now. Hallelujah, Lord. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray for Alfredo, Lord, that you will lift him out of that, of that bed, mighty God, that you will take him out, God, and deliver him finally forever, God, that he will walk, mighty God, in newness, Lord, of your, of your spirit, Lord, and that he will, mighty God, embrace, Lord, your love, mighty God, for everything that he has done, for, the, for what you have done for him, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, I give you praise and I give you glory right now, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray, mighty God, for, for Sister Lisa's grandchildren, mighty God, and her daughters, Lord. I pray for them, Lord, that they will keep filling with desire and passion to live for you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, you're the only one, mighty God, that can, that can do that, Lord. Show them. Show them the way. Show them how how beautiful you are God show them Lord that you can do all things mighty God hallelujah Jesus I I honor you mighty God I thank you God for it uh, that you would that you have touched the the uh, Rodriguez family God I pray God that you would touch them all Lord give them strength in this time uh, lift them up Lord encourage them Lord uh, that you're the God of gods and the Lord of lords there's no other God like you God in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for every member here today mighty God everybody here in this house Lord I pray for their lives I pray for the souls I pray that you will keep you're keeping power upon them, God. You're the only one that can do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray for Chad, mighty God. I pray for, for, the, for their daughter, Lord, in Jesus' name, God. You're the only one that can touch them, Lord. You're the only one that can hold them tight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, blessed is your wonderful name, mighty God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Mighty God, I pray for Sister Martha, mighty God. I pray, God, that you will open the doors, Lord, for the Ventura County job. Uh, open that door for her, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Let it be your will, Lord. Hallelujah. Let her pass her day, her, 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 uh, her license, Lord, in Jesus' name. You're the only one that, that can allow this to happen, Lord, in your precious name. I Thank you, Lord, and I glorify you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I praise you just a little longer, just a little longer, church. Just hang in there. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Pray for your family right now. I want everybody here to pray for your family, your loved ones, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. Hallelujah. Your wife, your husband. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. He called Oh, I praise you, God. I glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray, mighty God. Hallelujah for Sister Sharon, Lord. I pray, God, that you will heal her body, heal her back, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're the only one that can heal her, God. We plead the blood upon her, Lord, in your precious name. Thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy that endureth forever, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I praise you. I glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody say, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God. Amen. Thank you for doing that. There's just something about the position of kneeling down and, um, and, and praying. Amen. There's a, there's a surrender. There's a humbleness to that. Uh, because when we go before the king, amen, um, um, he, he, he knows. It's not like he doesn't know, amen, but, but he wants you to, um, to come before him. Uh, humbly before him and uh it it helps us uh touch god praise god i want to i want to talk to you um oh you know the last I, I think it was last week right i taught about um when when offenses come and it's funny because i uh, i just got my my pentecostal uh, uh herald uh, the pentecostal magazine that i get every every month and the title on the on the on the front of it was when, when offenses come. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, so, hey, we're in the same mind, you know, <laughs> amen. Praise God, that was good. Praise God. How many enjoyed that last, last Tuesday? Amen. Yeah.
Praise God. I'm glad you did. Amen. It will help you uh, deal with those issues. Amen. Um, I want to talk to you on this thought. Um, can God trust you with his investment? Can God trust you with his investment? Have you ever have you ever lend a card to somebody, and and you're saying, um, uh, please take care of it. Uh, please don't wreck it. Um, my 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 cousin, uh, way way back BC, um, lent me a a um, sixty nine Impala. Um, with metallic paint all the way around, uh, different colors and whatnot, and um, uh, had hydraulics, you know, it, everything on it, and I didn't 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 know how to work the hydraulics. You know, I was a I was a desert boy coming into the city life over there with him. He was all Pendleton back, and and um, and uh, and I was uh, long hair with bell bottoms. So, and uh, and so, <laughs> what an opposite, huh? <laughs> <coughs> and so he told me, I told him, let me go, let me go, to, let me go to the store to go get me something. And he says, okay, but take care of my car. And, um, and so I went to the liquor store, went over there, I dropped something on the floor, I leaned over to get it, and I hit a parked car. The whole right side was wasted. And when I walked in, when I drove up, the people saw the car, and, and before I even told him, somebody had ran over and told him of it. And because uh, he would, he had just he was showing it off. He never said anything to me. It, I mean, we were in Northridge, and when he he didn't say nothing to me all the way home. So obviously, he had trusted me with his investment because he had just got it out the paint shop. The guy that painted his car was nice enough to redo the whole thing for him. Um, I think as Christians, God has in invested a lot in you and me. So allow me to read some scripture to you, amen. Let's all stand just for the reading of the word for a moment, okay? Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. This is a very familiar uh, um, um, scripture, amen, or storyline. Not, I, I don't want to call it storyline, but uh, is, this is um, a great portion of, of God's words where he's speaking in such a way that, um, well, let's read it. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. And I want you to notice how he does this. This is he, he is he is a he is the master of this. Who called his own servants, not any servants, but his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to, here's the key, to his several ability. And straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents and likewise, he that received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with him. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou delivered unto me Five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done. Everybody say, Well done. Well done. 
He says, thou good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. And I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. You know, sometimes God only gives us a little bit to see how faithful you can be with just that little bit. We're asking for a lot, but God sees more than what you see in yourself. And he says, I'm only going to give you a little bit because I want to see how you treat me and how you treat it. He says, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Now, here's where it gets very interesting. He said, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, now, I want, you, I want you to understand how he describes everything to the Lord. I knew thee. I don't think he knew the Lord. But he, this is what he said. I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast has that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. That's pretty strong words coming from the Lord. Straightforward. I think God talked a lot about hell more than he did talk about love. And he did talk about his wrath, amen, but he also talked about many blessings. But he said, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap. You knew that I reap. And where I, where I sowed not, gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. When God gives you something, he expects it to be multiplied. He expects it for you to grow in it. He expects it for you to value it in a way that, that if you step out by faith, he's going to bless it. He said, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And then the last part, he says, and cast ye the unprofitable. This is a very strong word. Amen. I know when I do my business, I feel good when I make profit. When I, <clears throat> excuse me. When I, when I don't make any profit, I go back and I find out that my, that my guys slow play me on the job. I started counting the hours and started counting everything. I said, you guys really drained this one. He said, cast you the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Let's uh, put your Bibles down. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you, mighty God, just for these, these few moments here with your people, God. And Lord, uh, anoint the lips of clay, God. I am nothing without you, God. I need you right now. Need you more than ever, Lord. You have chosen this day for you. I thank you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Has anybody ran a business before? Anybody here? Oh, Brother Frank, yeah. That's right. Do you like it? When you make profit, you like that, huh? You know that you only paid maybe two thousand dollars, amen. For, for, for the it was going to cost you two thousand dollars. You bid the job for six thousand dollars, and you made four thousand dollars. 
That's, that's good money. Amen. What I like about the Lord, amen, the words and the works of Jesus Christ are, are so uh, uh, masterful, amen. Uh, there was a way that he could tell stories like no one else. He's the one who could put things together and adapt it to our lifestyle and what we could see around us. He, he could weave the parable with such, uh, such uh, uh, intrigue and action, but most of all, with much feeling into it. Uh, no one could, could take fields and... Um, and seeds and plows and uh, wineskins and coins and sheep and uh, and even even a boy, amen. And uh, and uh, the fish and the net and uh, and make them alive like the way he did. When people, when when the Lord spoke, everybody listened. He spoke in a way that it would catch your attention. He made it very simple. Obviously, there were simple folks back then. There was no no. Uh, educated uh, people as far as like what we know today. Amen. Uh, but there were smart people and humble people. And the same is true with Matthew 25. And it was last sermon. And when you read the, uh, the book of Matthew chapter 25, it was his last sermon. And it begins right there in Matthew 24, where he begins to talk about the parables. Amen. Um, and this, uh, this message came in like in the, in the last Hours of his life, amen, before he had to go to the cross. And um, uh, in the emphasis of his words that he spoke with was that his return. In this parable that we just read, it was about him going and him returning. And so it's very, God was always warning us in his stories was very direct in some points. In some points, he wanted us to figure it out ourselves. I can relate to the fisherman part. Because I fished for 12 years. And I can, so, I can know that we're throwing a net out in the, out in the ocean. The, in teaching his disciples of his return, Jesus uh, moved through a series of par- parables. In Matthew 24, he talks about the fig tree. In, Matthew, in the same chapter... 24, the parable of the good man of the house. In the same chapter, 24, the parable of the faithful servant. And then Matthew 25, he begins to speak about the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. In the same chapter, 25, this is where he speaks about the parable of the talents. The last two parables involve two major issues in the lives of men who are awaiting the return of the Lord. Is that what we're doing? We're waiting for the return of the Lord? I don't know about you, but I am. Amen. Yes, we, we're, we're, we're busy. Amen. Uh, I, 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 I told my wife, I never, I, I never knew that I had, you know, so many hours in the day. <laughs> I'm working 24-7 almost. I just sleep, get up, work, sleep, get up, and work. I'm not complaining. But I'm doing it for a purpose. I'm, I, I have, a, I have a, a broader picture in my life. Um, and this is what it's all about. The, the, the parable of the virgin deals with the fate of the unprepared. I want, I'm kind of breaking it down to you a little bit, okay? And the parable of the talents deals with the tragedy of wasted opportunities. I don't want you to wake up when you're 60 years old and say, man, I did nothing for the Lord. I don't want you to wake up at 80 years old and look back and say, I did nothing for the Lord. I never won a soul. I don't want you to be there. That's why I tell the young people, while you're young, you you got to take advantage of your youth, your strength, and do something for God. And watch how God will bless your life. The parable of the virgin deals with the waiting and the return of the Lord. You know the story. It's a, you know, you know, some were wise, some were unwise. Amen. And the ones that were unwise came up to the wise and said, "Give me some of your oil." And he said, "No, you go get your own." The oil represented the Holy Ghost, and you needed to be filled, full of the Holy Ghost. You, as a matter of fact, we all need to be full of the Holy Ghost at all times. 
Holy Ghost is always, oil is always significant of, of the Holy Ghost, of, 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 the, of the Spirit of God. The anointing. In the, parable, in the parable of the talent, deals with working until the return of the Lord. I told somebody, we were just talking about the other day, he says, he says uh, I told my daughter a while back, a few years back, I said, I, w- I don't want to be pastoring when I'm 70 years old. And, um, and um, I said, I want somebody to come in, you know, and, 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 and take over. And he says, well, Dad, you only got four years, three, four years to go. Four, four and a half. Well, I guess I'll be pastoring when I'm 70. <laughs> Unless the, the congregation kicks me out and gets somebody else. You can't do that because God put me here. Amen. Amen. But let's talk about this parable of the, of the talents. And I, the tone in this parable, it's really, um, really interesting because it involves that of a landowner who is going away for an extended period of time. Um, before his departure, he calls his servants and he gives them various portions of properties. And to one, he gives five talents. To another, he gives uh, two, two talents. And to the other, he gives one talent. When, uh, when you look at this, uh, when, you, when, you, when you start searching it, uh, one writer says that the, the worth of one talent uh, was about $30,000. $30,000. This is kind of fairly substantial amount of money where anybody can make an investment, right? Or even start a company. And so this, the man who received just one talent had enough money to get him started in some particular venture and that would have been, been uh, benefited the master. And that's what these men did that were, that were given. To not do anything. To not do anything. It's enough to ruin a man. Do, let me ask you this. Do you remember the first time you got the Holy Ghost? Do you remember what you did that night? Do you remember what, how you felt? You know, uh, you know the, the problem with meth addicts is this, is that the meth addict will take, take a hit the first time, and it totally thrills them. Same thing with heroin. But then they go back to try to find that one thrill again. And it ne- it's never there. It will never come. The difference with us, amen, is that when we got the Holy Ghost, it was joy unspeakable and full of glory. And guess what? It keeps getting better for us. When I go and tap into the Holy Ghost, it gets better for me. As a matter of fact, I get stronger with it, amen. I get better revelations, amen. I become a better man. I become a better husband, a father, amen, a pastor, amen, a minister. Whatever the case may be, you start getting better, Amen. So, and because of the servant that not investing in his master's ma- uh, money, he brought himself to a loss. The man who does nothing with what God has given to him will have both suffering and loss to deal with in the end. There was a moment in my life where um, I was working all the time. I had seven kids. I had to feed those those mouths. They would open up and they would just say, feed me. I had four full grown boys and three girls, amen, and, uh, and, uh, and payments to, and uh, I, I literally spent about almost between $800 and $900 a month in food. But I spent a lot of time working and I lost a lot of time with God. Trying to get the overtime, trying to get the hours, and trying to catch up. And I regret that. I'll tell you why I regret it. Because I didn't have enough time to really invest into my children. Because if I would have really invested into my children at that age, when they were just at, right at that age, where they're just peeking to do something else and peeking to actually do something better. I would come home between 7.30 and 8 sometimes. And I regretted that. By the time I got home, it was just like give him a hug. 
kiss them, and that was it. That's not good investment. And some of you have been brought up that way. You can't even remember how much, you can't even remember when your dad actually spent time with you, really spent time with you. No man can afford to wait until eternity before beginning to work. Amen. Things will wither, will wither if, if, if they are not used. They will just, just die out. You lose your passion. Amen. The blacksmith's arm. Amen. The welder's strength. The eye of the scout. The craftsman's delicate touch. Amen. Even the mind of a student will wither if it's not used. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. I was just talking to Brother Ronald, and uh, uh, he said something. What is it, Brother, you said? An idle mind is a devil's workshop. It's so true. You have to occupy your, your, yourself, amen, on the things of God. Spend time. Read something. Read something good. Get away from social media. Turn that thing off. Social media is just a bunch of garbage in there. Amen. Just garbage. It takes your, takes your prayer life. It takes your reading time. It's amazing how we can, forget our, we can forget our Bible at home and we won't go back. But if we forget our phone, we're making a U-turn and coming back. I can't live with. And uh, nowadays I tell my daughter, my other daughter, that has got five kids. I go, girl, you better spend, you better uh, um, uh, monitor these kids' uh, time on, on social media. Anyway, I'm not preaching, uh, you know, uh, that's not my subject tonight, but it sure, it sure sounds really good. Amen. The master was gone for an extended period of time, and while he was gone, two were working and one was waiting. The workers worked, and the waiters waited. I walked into the job, and I, and I saw one of my guys. We have a couple of buildings. I'm doing the Camarillo building over here, uh, the one that burnt down over here uh, by uh, the, the outlet mall. <coughs> and I, walk, I, dri- I drive up, and I see my guys working on one building, and I walk over there. I see another car in front of the building and, uh, and another bin, and I, I get off, and I see one of my guys just laying back in the morning around by, by 7.30, just kicking back with his eyes closed. <laughs> and I say, hey. Are you on the clock? He says, yeah, I was waiting for Julio. I go, why don't you go over there and help those guys? You see, they don't realize that the investment that I made in that property, in that job, is for the benefit of them. Not only for me, but it's a benefit for them. Because you... You want to be able, if you invest somebody, you want them to also invest in, in the, their time into it so that the company makes money and the company keeps going. Amen. But a slow for servant, like, like the way I perceive at the moment, okay, maybe I caught him that moment. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not giving him the benefit of the doubt. But the fact of the matter is, is that, is that when you have your attitude that way, then who's watching you? What are you doing when you're not being watched? Do you do good only when people watch you and that's it? And when you go home, that's, a, that's another story. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that is good. Amen. I'll, I'll even pat myself on the back. When the master returned for the far country, he called for his servants for a time of reckoning. When he began to evaluate the efforts of his servants, he found that two of his servants had, invest, uh, had invested in, in their money and had doubled the return. For that, there was a great reward. Uh, the principle is pretty clear here. It's very clear. God never demands things from men which they do not have. Let me put it this way to you. Men will never be equal in talent, but they can be equal in effort. See, when, when you want something in return, you can put a lot of extra effort and make it happen. You can in, invest in that time. The returns are great. 
what you do, amen, is, is, uh, uh, is this could work in companies. Could, and, but since we're talking about church setting here, amen, I want you to think about this. The more you invest into the kingdom of God, the benefits are real. They're huge. You know why people suffer when they leave the church? It's because they've lost the blessings of God. And God allows the walls to come down that normally was a hedge in your life to keep you away from all those things and protect you from things coming in your life. Then all of a sudden, those things are down because God says, okay, you're going to leave me? Let me pull my umbrella of protection from you for a while and watch how the blessing will stop. Because when you start allowing yourself, amen, to put or, or basically invest into the kingdom of God in everything you do, amen, you don't think that God notices? When I look at my guys out there working in the field, I know the guys, which guys work hard. I know which ones are consistent. Amen. I know guys, some don't move quicker, but they're faithful. They're, con- they're consistent. Amen. They come at work. I can depend on them. I can get up in the morning, and I know they're at the job site. When God, when, when you get up in the morning, amen, and you talk to God, God says, he, he's not always running everywhere, but he's consistent. He's always talking to me. He's always reading. He's reaching out to me because he's trying to get better with me. I'm going to bless this man. I'm going to bless him. And then everything changes. The man who is punished is the man who will not try. He said the man that is punished will not, uh, 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 the man who is punished will not, uh, the, uh, is the man who will not try. The man who had been given more talent had done nothing with his talent. He was cast into outer darkness away from the presence of the Lord. Let's talk a little bit about the investor. What was it about the two men who had invested their talents? What particular thing did they understand that the man with one talent did not understand? Oh, I'm opening it up for you. See if you you can help me. What do you think the difference was? We read this story. Yes, sir. They stepped out of their comfort zone. That's good. I like that. I like that. They took advantage of the opportunity. So an opportunity was given to them. And they took it. Why do you think that? What, what do you think that it, it, is that, Brother Ricardo? There, there's, there's something there I want to get. Pardon me? Faith. Yes, faith. Sacrifice. But remember who gave it to him? The Lord. That's what I was looking for. I'm going to do the best that I can with what I have. That's all I want, an opportunity. I just want an opportunity that God can, can see that even if I, I should have had a shovel, but I had a spoon. I used a spoon because I had faith. Amen. I didn't want to stop. Amen. And God will multiply your efforts even on a small little action or little act like that. Are, are you understanding what I'm trying to tell you? Amen. And so there's a. There's a, there's a series of principles here to learn, amen, life guides to be received from, a, from this parable of the Lord. The character does not come by inheritance. Man may inherit uh, many things uh, such as land and, and states and thrones and crowns, but in the spiritual realm such as it's not to be. It takes certain elements of sacrifice and desires before one will reap the harvest of spiritual returns. Let me just, let me just say this. I had invested... And I put myself in as an example, okay? And I don't like doing that, but um, I invested into the kingdom the moment I, I received him inside of me. My family will tell you. I brought people to my house. I brought drug addicts. I brought drunks. I brought lesbians to my house. <laughs> God. That was crazy. My pastor said, Brother Rojo, you can't win everybody. 
I'd, I'd kick my, my kids out of their bedrooms and put somebody in there. Am I right? But I, 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 I was investing, amen. I didn't stop. I always was investing. And I invested into this ministry, into Moore Park, where God put me there for a while. And because, Brother Frank, I've been investing and investing and investing, amen, and I've been praying and praying and praying. He said, you've been faithful on those little things that I've given you, and I'm going to give you something better. Amen. And Sister Martha, we're here. Amen. Because of the investment that we've all did together. Right. You see, I want you to put this together. Amen. Because right now you're here in a Bible study, amen, and you, you are investing in yourself. In the meantime, you're going to go home and invest in your family. And because you do that, amen, God says, I like that. I'm going to bless that, that woman. I'm going to bless that man. I'm going to bless this family. Yes, sir. <laughs> brother I I, I know I, trust me I, I know I know I know but yeah I, I know you do you do I that's funny but you're right <laughs> the investor first of all must have something to invest We have been filled with the Spirit, amen, from the moment that we repent of our sins, baptized in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost, and some things begin to be invested in our lives, something precious in our lives, invested. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7 says this, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. <coughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. For God has commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency, I want you to listen to this last portion, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Before we can ever make an impact on the, world, uh, on the world for God, there will have to be that initial investment of the Spirit. When I look back in the Bible, I find Gideon was a man in the poorest tribe of Israel. Uh, but God invested some leadership abilities in his life, amen, and took them to a victory. When you read the life of Moses, Moses was a man who could not speak, but God invested in, in some leadership abilities into him, and he led the children of Israel out of capa uh, captivity. When you read the story of David, who was, a, who was removed from the pastors of the keeping the sheep, but God invested some leadership abilities in him that caused Israel to expand, amen, their lands and power because of a man that God invested in. I, I want you to understand, amen, that the investment that God has made in your life it's for a reason. Amos was a herdman. Peter was a fisherman. Matthew was a public and a little, and a little boy who gave lunch. Amen. All those were investments. The investor must be willing to take a risk. Amen. You know, there, when you invest in, in, a, in the stock market and whatnot, they, 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 there's a scale of are you a low risk, uh, high risk? You know, they tell you, okay, how much are you willing to, how much do you be willing to risk? I have always been the high risk. What's that? Reckless faith. <laughs> Reckless faith, yes. I guess you could say that, brother. Reckless faith. Amen. In everything that I've done, amen, I, I've taken a risk. Like I said, 
if we don't accept the challenge, we'll never know the thrill of victory. And this involves the elements of sacrifice and of faith, just like you said, brother. There is always a certain amount of crime involved with caution. Amen. But uh, the man was given the single talent. Amen. Proves this. Amen. We must be willing to invest what has been given to us. Amen. Um, I was going to read a story. It's a little longer, so I'm not, I'm not going to. Um, in Acts chapter 9, it tells us the conversion of Saul of Tarsus. Now watch this. I want, you to, I want you to know something here. The great persecutor of the church, the maniac who was basically killing machine when it comes to Christians. He was out there getting Christians and taking them to jail and then being stoned. Now was stricken by blindness because he had encountered God on the path to Damascus. And God calls a man called what? Ananias. Called Ananias. You know, you know what the beauty about this? Uh, God calls a man whom not, not much is known about him. The Bible does not say, record that he was a great prayer warrior. The Bible doesn't even mention him being a great soul winner. The Bible doesn't even say that he was a great preacher or did that. But in my mind, I'm thinking that he was a praying man. Because in order for him to hear God, he had to be connected to God. He was willing to obey the voice of the Lord despite those little doubts like, Lord, are you sure you want this man? You know what he's done. He's been persecuting the church and killing some of your own. I'm paraphrasing here. You sure you want him? The investor must be cautious, conscious of the overall scheme of things. See, when God invests in us, we don't see the big picture. We don't see what he sees. What we see only are basically what we see in front of us. And we forget that he is, is, is the creator of all things. And when he puts an investment in you, you need to have him show you where he wants you to sow and reap or, or, or invest. And sometimes we don't. What do you mean you can't do it? Ananias kind of told him, he said, Lord, this guy's going he's, he's, he's gonna to turn on you. He may be a spy. The investor has to see the big picture. He has to have kept track of the history and also have a plan for the future. In investors in companies and those that, if, if, has anybody ever invested in stock? Okay. So, you know, investing in stock, gold or whatever, and silver or whatever, and other stocks and, 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 and stocks. And, and you got to keep track on the different stock indices. They're, 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 they not only observe the stock indices, but, but they track interest rate. They record the rate inflation and all that stuff. Amen. So they monitor employment statistics. And right now, it is not good. <laughs> it is not good. Amen. Somebody told me, he says, Brother Rojo, you need to get rid of everything <laughs> because it's going to get bad. <clears throat> but uh, but they get the feel of the big picture. If you got a small picture of your life, amen, with God, then you have not received that revelation of God. Now, I want you to notice something here. Um, the opportunities that God gives us all the time. And Martha, uh, Martha, Mar Martha and Mary, right? Remember? Okay. The Lord walked into their house. Martha was busy, scurrying and active and working in the kitchen. And Mary, quiet, serene, sitting at the feet of the master. And Martha was preoccupied, planning, thinking, and Mary contemplating and meditating and taking the things Jesus said to her heart. Martha, bitter, complaining and comparing, Mary quiet and treasuring that moment with God. 
Martha worried about preparing the meal that would give a strength for a day. And Mary was worried about preparing her heart for eternity. What was the difference? And I'm asking this question to all of us. What was the difference? Martha could only see for a day. And Mary could only see for the eternity. See, when people come and they get the Holy Ghost for the first time, they only see it for that moment, for their time, just that day. They got the Holy Ghost, they feel good, they go back, but they don't see the big picture that is for eternity. See, to invest, you got to see down the road. If I invest in something, I want to see, I wanna, I'm looking down the road for a retirement. Yes. My people will perish? Yes. Um, I believe that's in, uh, in, in um, Micah. Mm. I'm not going to say yes or no. Okay. But Mary investing, because she was a conscious of the overall scheme of things, she saw the big picture. She understands one thing, only one thing. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 14 says, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. In other words, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But what is your life? He's saying, what is your life? It is, it's even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Sometimes it's hard to see the whole picture. Especially when you got things coming at you in every direction. You got work. You got schedules. You got your children. You got bills, you got the IRS, you got the rent, you don't have money for it. They're getting ready to lay off at, 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 the, at, at the job. A lot of things are coming in a way. I, I'll be honest with you. I run a business and I, and, I, and I pastor this beautiful church. And there are times, amen, that things press towards me. But God has given me strength, amen, and given me wisdom to push those things away. It has helped me, amen. And in between all of that, amen, I, I, I always tell Brother Tosh, I go, I fight, fight for my time, amen. The time that I've, I've been normally would study, you know, during after work or anything like that, and now I spend my time trying to, uh, trying to get this place done. And so right now, I'm fighting for time. But, I'm, but I am investing on some things right now in my life, amen, that's going to benefit all of us. All of us. Amen. Enough of that. Sometimes it's hard to see the whole picture. That, that is where one must allow trust to play in the picture. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Some of you could probably finish that. And lead not unto thine own understanding. And in all thy ways, and in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct thy paths. The investor must understand that wealth does not occur overnight. Great men and women of God will not be made in a single instant. I wish it was that easy, but it's not. There are things that one must endure and and, and reach for in this walk for, with God. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 10 says this. And besides this, give all diligence. And we, we read this before, okay? And besides this, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they may... They make you that you shall never be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And I've forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling. To make your calling. Let me read that last portion. And wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling. An election, sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fail. Wow. One of the most, uh, one of the most,
one of one of the things that that we as as um, as Christians is taking the opportunity um, when it is given. You going to say something, brother? Maybe. Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Uh, let, let me read uh, just a small thing, and I'm gonna. I'll, I'll be closing with this, okay? I just got a couple of more minutes. Uh, I took this story. It's in, you can look it up in the internet. Yehiel Dinur was one of the principal witnesses in the Nuremberg war crime trials of 1961. He was one of the few survivors at, of Auschwitz. In one of the film clips from Adolf Eichmann's trial. He sh it showed Dinur entering the courtroom, coming face to face with Ickman. It was the first time that Dinur, Dinur had seen him in 20 years. Stopped cold, Dinur began to sob uncontrollably and then fainted while the pres presiding judge pounded the gavel for order. Was Dinur overcome by hatred, fear, or horrid memories? No. It was, it was none of these. Rather, Dinur realized that Ekman was not the god-like army officer who had sent masses to their deaths. This Ekman was an ordinary man. He said, I was afraid about myself, he said. Dinur said, I saw that I am capable to do this. I'm exactly like him. The total of Dinur's terrible discovery Eggman is in all of us, a horrifying statement, but indeed capture the central truth about the nature that is in man. It really caught me when I read this story. And this is what happens, amen, to men who quit investing in life and their walk with God. They may feel like their returns are not paying off. Our prayers, our faith, our sacrifice, our commitment, and even our hope has a, set, has a tendency to fade if we do not realize that the spiritual wealth will not occur overnight. We want it to occur overnight, but it doesn't happen. Often time, often time wears us down, doesn't it? It wears us down. Can I confess something to you? That before we came over here, I was talking to God. And I said, God, if it's me that's not growing this church, then get me out of the way. Make a way and get me out of here. Bring somebody else younger, maybe more charisma, more knowledgeable, more educated, you know, like Brother Crawford, you know. I'm still here. I'm the kind of guy that likes to see results. And a lot of you are the same way too. In, in, in the verse, uh, in Matthew 25, uh, chapter 25, verse 19, it, uh, it says, After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth on him. See, the investor must be willing to make adjustments. In stretching uh, towards the church growth, one must understand that there are some adjustments that must be made. Amen. However, also, also, uh, one also must understand that there are some non-negotiables in our lives, right? Right, church? There are some things that we, don't, we do not negotiate. The message, the doctrine, amen. Acts 2.38, we, we do not negotiate with that. Uh, we don't no negotiate with the oneness of God. Uh, we don't negotiate with the, with the baptism in Jesus' name, amen. We don't, we don't negotiate with the standard of holiness, amen, in righteous living, amen. We don't. We just don't do that. And much more that I can say, amen. I can withstand some criticism down here. Uh, I, I mean, if I, can, if I can stand criticism down here, if I can, if, if I can, uh, if I can hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, uh, then that, that's going to be a, a great time for me, for all of us, for you. The man who refuses to make adjustment will find himself living in a stagnant world. We all, including myself, I'm adjusting all the time. So that I can make a precision cut in my life. Amen. 
so I can be able to use, amen. Maybe the static in my hearing from God is not working. I got I to gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta find that frequency with God. And the only way I find my frequency with God is if I spend more time with God. Because 10 minutes here, 5 minutes here is not enough. You may feel good in your conscience, but, but it's not enough. Not in the world that we live in today. Far from it. The investor must understand that there will be some losses along the way. Every day we will not be gaining a point. Uh, we, we will not be gaining a point, And there will be times that the, that the market does not grow as fast as we would like, desire it to be. However, a consistent, diligent planning and follow through will gain necessary footholds over the course of time in our life. Even prayer that we pray will not be answered even every time that we fast. Amen. It may not always bring the desired effect. There will be some losses along the way. And there will be some time that we will warm to the wrong fire, as Peter did when he denied the Lord, when he got around the wrong fire that he shouldn't have been there. It feels good, but it's the wrong fire. And we'll preach a message one of these days, Brother Abraham, the wrong fire. In closing, amen, please stand with me. There will be times that we hurriedly unsheathe the sword and swing it wildly and cut up. But we did not intend to cut up as Peter did in the garden. Just because you can swing the sword, you have to be, preci- you have to be precise in how you swing it. And I mean by the word of God. I don't know, a lot of you don't know Brother Pugh. Um, but I got to meet him. He passed away. He's one of the pioneers of, of Pentecost. Uh, my my uh, wife and I got to sit across a table with him. Amen. And um, it, it, we called it the uh, the round table. Um, uh, and we were asking him questions, and, and he was giving us answers and stuff. And um, uh, this man was used greatly. He was a prayer warrior. Uh, he... He, out of his church came many prophets from his church, um, and, um, and some considered him as a prophet himself. But I want you to, I want you to listen to this, okay, because this man here, um, um, he got the Holy Ghost at the age of seven. Um, he was the only one who prayed through and received the Holy Ghost on a three-week revival, only one. When the evangelist was asked how the revival went, his reply was this. It was so-so. Only one got the Holy Ghost. Only one. See, the value of one soul is incredible. It is. The investment that you put into one soul, one family, is tremendous. And all it takes is one soul to open up a great revival in a church. Every pastor will tell you that. Don't under ever underestimate that the investment that you're doing on somebody's life is not worth it. My family knows that every time I used to do Bible studies like I had Two Bibles to three Bible studies a week. I'm not patting myself on my, on my back, please. That's not what I'm saying. But my investment was in the kingdom all the time. I was kingdom minded, and I still am. And when I would teach those Bible studies, you know, I would come home working from 10 hours, and I'd come home and I'd barely jump in the shower and get dressed and go out, amen, with my, with my, my search for truth and do it, do it over and over again. I was investing in people's lives. Maybe when you go out there tomorrow, I want you to look around and who will you invest in? If God invested in you, what would you do with your talent? It's just something to think about. And I want to pray that God will put somebody in your path. Amen. And I think... I think, and let, me, let me say this, amen, because it's very important that I say this. 
The greatest thing that you could ever do. The greatest thing you could ever do. I mean, you could, you could be a prophet. You could be an evangelist. You can be a teacher. You can be a pastor. You could do all, you could have all the fivefold ministry. But the greatest thing that you could ever do is win a soul. That is the highlight of God. That is the highlight of God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy that endureth forever, Lord. I love you, God, and I worship you. I magnify you, God, for everything that you have done. I pray for this church. I pray for the members, mighty God. You are the only one, mighty God, that keeps us together. You are the only one, mighty God, that, is, that has opened doors and will continue to open doors, God. Touch every saint of God. Lord, lead us and take us, mighty God, so that we can win it to somebody. Let us invest in somebody else, God. You've invested in us. Let us invest in somebody else. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, I thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Amen. Um, before you leave, I got one announcement here to make. Uh, this Thursday, if you want to paint, if you'd like to paint, amen, we're going to be painting the, uh, uh, the, uh, the second part of um, the uh, Welcome Center, okay, bathrooms, Hot, uh, the vestibule, the sound room, and whatnot. So, so if you come, we're almost there. We're almost there, man. I'm like, just like, can't wait. And I and I thank every one of you that that's helped a lot. Okay, um, and um, those that come and and do all what you do. You know, I, I don't want to go through the details of what you guys do, but I just as a, as your pastor, I, I am very very thankful. Um, this week. Uh, uh, we have, um, uh, I'll be wor we're working Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday, and then next week on Wednesday, I will not be here. Uh, if um, Brother Miguel, are you going to be around next, w next Wednesday? You are? Uh, okay, so can you, can you teach the, the class here? Amen. Uh, so unless, unless they don't want you to, then let me know, okay? <laughs> but I think they do want you to. Amen. <laughs> I'm teasing you, Brother Miguel. Uh, but um, teach the class. I'll be in, at camp. I'm going to camp meeting uh, for some time needed for me. Amen. I, and I, I, I welcome everybody. If, if you, um, I, I, would, I would love to see the whole church go, to be honest with you. I, I, you shut this down and just go over there, you know, if, if you could. Uh, so, um, but if you can make it for one night, you're not, you're not going to regret it. You're not going to regret it at all. So, um, and um, uh, is there anything else happening this Friday? Nothing? Well, we have Father's Day on Sunday. Oh, that's right. Father's Day on Sunday. Okay. So uh, pray, for, pray for Alfredo because uh, um, uh, senior, because he was supposed to get baptized this weekend. And um, uh, I, uh, hopefully that he will. You know, I pray that he will. Um, you know, I know that he probably wanted his son to see him. You know, and if he can get out uh, before Sunday, then that'd be a great thing. So let's pray that he gets out. Amen. And, and he comes back home. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I can I can be here at, at four o'clock, three thirty, you know. So um, and we have the paint, we have the rollers, we have everything. So. Yeah. Once we paint, uh, we'll lay the floor down, and we'll start doing the baseboards, and and um, uh, and w then uh, hopefully we'll start having our Sunday school classes in that side of the building. We can start setting up the, the, the classes in there, and they can go into from here. They can go to those classes over there, and then the last portion will be the sanctuary. So that's coming up, and so um, that in uh, Frank. Frank's been doing a good job with the uh, helping us with the electrical. Uh, we, we're blessed to have you, Brother Frank. Is it all the electrical that, that it would have cost us thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars, right, Brother Steve? That's that's. Uh, I mean, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, pray that God 
that God blesses him, okay? All right? So um, and anything else? Any other comments tonight? Okay. And thank you for those that brought food. If you haven't brought food, bring some food. <laughs> Yes, please, please. Amen. It, it, it's always a, a blessing. Amen. What happens is that th these men come from work, uh, straight to work, from, from, from work to work over here. So they don't have time to go eat dinner. So we, we, they bring food and we, and, we, and we bless them here. Amen. So anyway, you're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Drive home safely.